Students, uh, my name is Aktikan Oları and uh, I will present you an optimization study for searching a canard position in a close coupled delta wing and canard configuration. Uh, this is my outline. Uh, I will first introduce you uh, the close coupled delta wing and canard configuration and then I will uh, talk about the objectives and methods we used in the study and then I will pass to the um, results part and I will um, discuss the results that we obtained and finally I will conclude the, this study with some remarks. Um, delta wings are commonly used especially among the aircraft that have um, that demand <coughs> high speeds and high maneuverabilities. Uh, because of its shape, uh, delta shape, delta wings have some advantages for these types of aircraft. Uh, due to its high sweep leading edge, uh, re delta wings reduces compressibility effects and wave drags at high speeds. Uh, on the delta wings, lift generation is provided by leading edge vortices. So high angles of attack create stronger leading edge vortices and therefore lift coefficient increases with the high angle of attack. Uh, also, these effects provide high maneuverability capability for those kinds of aircraft. Um, when you increase the angle of attack, vortex becomes stronger, but if you keep increasing the angle of attack, um, at a specific point, vortex breaks down. And if you keep increasing and increasing the angle of attack, um, breakdown location moves forward along the wing and eventually you may uh, cause the whole wing stall. So how important is this breakdown location? Um, after this breakdown point, uh, vortex loses its energy, it actually dissipates, uh, and negative CP values collapse, therefore. Uh, actually this negative CP region is the main reason of lift generation, so uh, after the breakdown location, you also lose the lift as you uh, lose the negative CP region. Uh, because this sudden change in force distribution, I mean, uh, you, you generate the lift here and you do not generate the lift here. Uh, because of this sudden change in force distribution, uh, moment may also change dramatically. So how should we, uh, how can we cope with the uh, vortex breakdown phenomena? I mean, uh, we have to delay vortex breakdown as long as we can do. Um, there are some tools implemented on the delta wings to delay the vortex breakdown location. Uh, and one of these tools is adding a canard in front of the wing. Uh, especially you have if you have a small aspect ratio wing I mean if the wing small uh, wing aspect ratio is smaller than three and if the canard and wing are close coupled to the, each other um, canard have some positive effects on the wing vortex um, as you can see here canard vortex flows back a, to the wing and it affects the wing vortex. In the literature, um, there are many there are many studies uh, that has shown that uh, adding another vortex to the system uh, delays the vortex breakdown location of the wing vortex. Uh, by the way, this um, this figure is from an experimental study which is conducted by Bergman, Hummel and Oelker and uh, our numerical study is also based on this experiment. So in this experiment uh, they show that the effect of adding canard to the geometry uh, but it is not interested in the location of canard in the study. Uh, you may see here uh, canard and wing are in coplanar uh, configuration, I mean they are on the same plane. 
However, we can say that uh, it may not be the best location that uh, maximizes the effects of con art. And uh, there are some studies in literature particularly investigating the location of con art. Uh, but these studies look and compare on a few, uh, a few con art positions. They do not apply any um, optimization process. Only a few positions are compared and so. So, uh, searching the optimum relative position of canard is needed. I mean, uh, an optimization study is needed to be added in the literature. And this is our uh, motivation for this study. Uh, in this study, we are aiming constructing an automated optimization tool or an optimization process in which all um, meshing flow calculation and grid adaptation, deformation and th these processes is handled by software itself automatically uh, and we are consequently searching for the canard searching for the canard location where uh, lift to drag ratio is optimal and also we have to understand the flow of behavior that moves the uh, canard to the final position. Um, here you can see the flow chart that is followed in the study. Uh, all steps are automatically executed by Dakota software. I mean um, even the external softwares like Gmesh and uh, SU squared are called and executed by Dakota. A baseline, uh, baseline geometry is given into the process and then first uh, mesh is created by Gmesh. It's an automated meshes, uh, automated meshing process and this meshing process results a relatively coarse mesh resolution because uh, you want to get the uh, converged mesh resolution with the Good adaptation technique of the uh, built in the SU squared. So, in this point, uh, SU squared comes into the picture. Uh, gradient based mesh adaptation is applied a few times to get the converged mesh. When the mesh is converged, uh, a final flow solution is done and uh, a joint solution, sensitivity analysis, and projection of these sensitivity values uh, is all done by uh, SU squared. Uh, SU squared gives the, the um, gradient values as output. So this output is fed to the uh, Dakota software and all the remaining optimization processes are done by Dakota. Uh, and until the uh, objective function is converged, uh, the formation uh, of geometry and uh, all these optimization steps are repeated. And the finally, we have we will have the optimum geometry. Um, in this study, we are using GMesh as mesh generator. It's an open source code, so uh, freely accessible. Gmesh has a uh, built-in scripting language, so you can use a pre-prepared script and uh, therefore automate the meshing process. Also, we are using this feature of Gmesh, the automated meshing process, because we need to remesh the modified geometry at each design step. Um, we are using SU squared as flow solver, especially because of it has um, built-in a joint solver and uh, it allows getting conversion converged mesh efficiently with its um, gradient-based grid adaptation tool. So all grid adaptation, uh, flow solution, and gradient calculation stuff is done by SU squared. Uh, then the uh, remaining optimization process is uh, done by using Dakota. Our case is a bound constraint nonlinear optimization problem. Uh, our, con our constraints are 
only the geometric constraints determined by the fuselage of the aircraft model. Um, objective function is defined as lift to drag ratio in order to maximize the performance at a given maneuver of the aircraft. Um, we are using the quasi-Newton method. In this method, uh, Hessian is approximated by BFGS method and the gradients are obtained from SU squared. So, um, let me pass to the results. Uh, as I said in introduction part, our study is based on the uh, experiment conducted by the Bergman, Hummel and Ölker. Uh, in order to get consistency with this experiment, we are using the same flow properties with the experiment. I mean, uh, all calculations are in 0 0.117 Mach and um, 1.6, uh, 1.4 uh, million Reynolds number. Um, following results are at the 20 degrees angle of attack, but uh, different angle of attack settings will also be assessed in future work. Um, I will first talk about the uh, May study and then discuss the uh, results of conf configuration optimization. Um, as I said, uh, objective function is lift to drag ratio while the uh, design parameters are x and z positions of the canard. Um, this is the geometry and dimensions we used in this study. This geometry is originally given in the experimental study so uh, we just reproduced it with the same dimensions. Um, four different meshes are generated for the uh, mesh study. Uh, first one is the most coarse one, which is baseline mesh. It is actually output grid of the G mesh. And the remaining three are resulting meshes after adaptation processes. Um, gradient based adaptation method is used in the study. Uh, it is based on the dense, dense the gradient. And each adaptation step creates 10% um, uh, new element of existing element number. Uh, here you can see the uh, global element sizes of each meshes, each grids. Uh, I want to go in detail of the meshes. Uh, these are spanwise sections that. Um, 65% of the wing root cord. Uh, you can see that each optimization step, each uh, I'm sorry, each adaptation step mostly concerns the uh, cells in the vortex region. Almost nothing changes in the far field, but vortex region is highly refined. Uh, also, if we look at the uh, if, if you look at the core-wise core section, there are mostly uh, refined regions as you can see here. Uh, these are actually the um, canard and wing, wing vortex patterns. This is the canard vortex pattern and this is the wing vortex pattern. Um, so uh, the reason of this refinement patterns is that um, actually calculating the vortices with coarse mesh gives high gradients at vortex regions in here and adaptation tool efficiently deals with the deals with those high gradient regions uh, I mean uh, the adaptation tool is efficient because uh, there are no overly defined meshes at the regions um, at the regions that have more steady flows. I mean, uh, like far field, or uh, the regions irre irrelevant to these vertical flows. Adaptation only concerns with the vortex region actually. So, because uh, so therefore, it is efficient technique for the getting uh, converged mesh. So then we are um, expecting to resolve vortices more accurately because of the adaptations. 
Here the dots represent the uh, experimental data we are based on. Uh, the red curve is baseline mesh and the other curves are uh, result, results of um, optimization, uh, sorry, adaptation steps. You can see how the uh, vortex region becomes steep and steep. I mean uh, vortex region uh, shrinks and the peak value increases, uh, especially second and third adaptation steps accurately predict the pressure distribution trend given by the experiment. Uh, it means that with the um, adaptation we can accurately resolve the flow actually. Um, on the other hand, uh, current solutions predict much higher peak values especially at the uh, especially it, at the rear half of the link. Um, actually at around 40% and the 60% of the root cord being vortex loses its, its strength. You can see that from the um, experimental data. Uh, but here we are solving an implicit problem. Uh, therefore wing vortex does not dissipate. It saves its energy through the wing. So, uh, over prediction on the vortex string is resulted from solving an inviscid problem. Uh, here, uh, the Euler solutions gave sufficiently enough predictions for our first optimization studies. So, uh, we preferred to using inviscid solutions. And as the result, uh, I can say that two-step adaptation gives the um, converged mesh resolution because uh, two-step and three-step uh, adaptations uh, gives almost the uh, same pressure distribution. So uh, by using two-step adapted mesh we are passing to the um, optimization part. Here the colored um, colored canard is baseline design and uh, gray one is the optimized configuration. Uh, you can see that the dominant movement is along the plus Z direction. Canard is located at the upper side of the wing at the uh, optimized configuration and uh, here it is not so visible, but uh, canard is slightly moved towards the, the to towards to the thing. Um, these are the deformation amounts uh, relative to the uh, root cord of root cord length of the canard. So I mean, uh, movement in z direction is approximately 20% uh, of the uh, canard cord canard cord length while the um, movement in x direction is uh, approximately 4% at the end of this optimization process um, lift to drag ratio increases from 3.09 to uh, approximately 3.13. Uh, drag coefficient is almost kept constant while the uh, while the lift is increased with this movement, with this uh, canard movement. Another interesting thing is uh, moment coefficient also is increased, uh, which this uh, this this increase uh, results actually the higher pitch up moment. And this result should be studied in, de in detail because uh, it can have negative effects on uh, longitudinal stability of the aircraft. Uh, in this figure you can see the uh, CPU distribution over the whole wing. Uh, blue curves are results of the uh, optimiz optimized configuration. Um, from the beginning of the wing to the end, um, 
optimized configuration gives a stronger leading edge vortex you can see the uh, peak values uh, this is exactly what is wanted to increase the lift uh, remember that these are negative CP values and uh, a stronger vortex is also a stronger suction on overall wing so stronger suction means the higher lift uh, at the front half of the wing uh, it seems that difference in uh, peak CP values high are higher I mean the uh, at the rear part of wing suction is almost the same almost equal for baseline and optimized design but at the front uh, optimized design seems that uh, it have it has significantly higher suction than baseline design um, remember that pitch up moment increased after the optimization process here you can see the reason of this uh, of this change in um, pitch up moment and let's look at the uh, vortex behavior in detail uh, here you can see the vortex the plots on different suction different sections on the wing uh, if we compare the words to values of two configurations we see that um, optimized configuration have a darker slightly darker uh, vortex plots so it means that um, optimized configuration have uh, stronger vortices stronger vortices and also stronger vortices uh, therefore we can see that see the reason of stronger vortices that are shown in CP distribution plots here and the resulting higher lift since uh, as mentioned before uh, stronger vortex results higher lift um, on the other hand there is an interesting thing about the uh, interactions of vortex cores these streamlines uh, represent the vortex cores in, in uh, baseline configuration. Canard vortex uh, follows a helical path around the wing vortex and it wraps the uh, and it's it wraps around the uh, wing vortex at the rear half of wing. Uh, but on the other hand, um, moving the canard upward, moving the canard to the upward. Uh, it seems that it uh, resulted the separation of those two vortices I mean now canard vortex moves in a straight way close to the wing root and uh, it does not swirls around uh, it does not swirls around the wing vortex anymore uh, this is an interesting thing because we did not expect such behavior uh, it will be studied in detail in future work also so here we can see the um, exposed components of the streamlines passing through the wing vortex core uh, this is a chord wise representation so it shows the change in uh, x velocity component x velocity value uh, along the wing both baseline and optimized configurations have similar um, velocity profiles up to 0 0.6 of the chord uh, but after this point on x velocity component of optimized configuration drops steeper while the um, while the drop in baseline is more slight probably the reason of this difference is the canard vortex remember that uh, in baseline design canard vortex swirls around the uh, canard vortex swirls around the wing vortex at the rear half while at the optimization case it is not the same and this shifted velocity profile probably the effect of uh, the canard vortex in baseline configuration um, drops in exposed to component shows that the vortex starts dissipating uh, if the x velocity drops 
and it reaches to zero uh, vortex is broken down and this point is called the breakdown point but here uh, we do not have uh, we do not see any breakdown point in this solutions because uh, we are using innocent cases but only see only uh, but we only see that the vortex starts losing its strength after the uh, sixty percent of the cord. So uh, to sum up all obtained results, an optimization cycle is developed for a um, close coupled delta wing configuration. It can be also uh, applied any geometry if the baseline is provided. If the baseline geometry is provided, um, this cycle is automated. All geometry deformation, the meshing, um, flow solution stuff is automatically handled by the cycle itself. SU squared is a key software of this cycle. Uh, most of the work is done by SU squared. Um, for example, flow solutions, um, grade adaptation, a joint solution, and grade gradient calculation all is done by uh, SU squared um, in this optimization method we used quasi Newton method uh, gradient is obtained from the um, SU squared and Hessian is approximated by Dakota by using uh, BFGS method um, as the result of this optimization study we obtained stronger wind vortex and it results uh, increase um, it results one percent increase in um, lift to drag ratio uh, on the other hand pitch up moment also increased as side effect uh, and it can result in harmful effect on the longitudinal stability of the aircraft so uh, as the future work we also have to consider uh, moment coefficient change uh, number of design parameters will be increased more design parameters will be added to the problem uh, such as canard incidence angle or maybe uh, leading edge sweep angle as I said uh, these solutions were invested but viscous solutions will be used in future work rather than these invested solutions and um, also it's planned to combine this study with shape optimization because uh, SU squared provides a powerful shape optimization tool and we are planning to uh, implement it in our design cycle uh, thank you for your kind attention if you have any question or suggestions uh, please contact me, contact me by this email uh, thank